Dan, I think it's time to reconsider direct tones. Consider this. everyone, welcome to That Pedal Show, Dan here. Mick here, hello. That was a, a voyage of, um, what's the opposite to discovery? <laughs> um, I don't know, uh, a non-voyage. Am amnesia. Okay, there we go. There we go. Uh, you mean in the playing department? And yeah, all that stuff. Okay, welcome. Uh, we are going to talk about direct tones today. We're going to have a revisit, tell the story in a minute. Um, before that, some housekeeping. Indeed. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Also, a massive thank you to anyone that's gone to thatpottershowstore.com and grab some merch and help support the show. Yes. Really, really appreciate if it. If you are watching this any time around the holiday period, you can hopefully buy the TPS Pedal Deer. Uh, pedal Board the Deer. Yes. Pedal Deer. Pedal Deer. Pedal Deer. Pedal Deer. Pedal Deer Board. Um, our, our attempt at excellent design for the holiday period and something to wear on the happy day. Indeed. Or indeed, in and around the happy day. Yeah. It doesn't have to. I mean, you could wear it in March if you like. Uh, yeah. Which may be when you're watching this video. I'm going to wear this shirt when we film in March. In March. Yeah. Okay. Just and Then you could get in early for next <laughs> holiday good. period. Perfect. Or Perfect. Christmas, if you prefer. Perfect. Right. What are we doing then, Dan? And why are we doing this? Uh, direct tones. We're doing it because we've been asked to do it. This is not something that Mick and I are hugely au fait with. So it will be uh, a voyage of discovery. Yeah. Um, unlike the intro. <laughs> I'm, yeah. We get asked about plugging directly into the PA. Yes. People, for whatever reason, feel like they don't want to use their amplifier, they can't use their amplifier, there's too much uh, volume on stage. Yeah. So what options are there for plugging directly in? Well, as many of you will have, uh, either whether whether it's yourself or a friend or whatever, you know, a real world example of this, a good friend of mine, Neville, who I worked with for many years uh, on guitar magazines, he does uh, a... He has done a gig for, for decades now with a, a, an old British rocker called Marty Wilde. And Marty had lots of hits in the 60s. Right. And they still go out and they still play theatres, decent venues, and they still tour. Marty's a, a, a fine age. Okay. Still sings awesome. They're still really rocking, but they had to go silent on stage. And Neville went to a Helix, a Line 6 Helix. 
Um, and then for whatever reason, he's decided he's going to stop using that. And he wants to go back to a more traditional pedal board. Okay. But do away with the amp. And he came over uh, for me to put him together a sort of ersatz board as a sort of test right. before Dan and I build him, or Dan builds him the, the proper thing. And we tried out a few things. And one of the things we tried was this DSM and Humboldt simplifier. And I had a kind of like, actually, do you know what? That sounds really good. Okay. I really like it. Right. So why don't we revisit this whole thing? Yep. Put a couple of the popular choices on the board and maybe come up with some other ideas that will that will help you um, deal with this if it's something that you're facing. Yep. Now, as for the aforementioned uh, Helix or I don't know, whatever else it is you might use as a sort of com complete digital solution, mm -hmm. what would that be? Um the new thing, fractal, that's, yeah, fractal, Kemper, Kemper all those. Uh, the new thing that's just come out that everyone keeps talking about, um, Boss GT one thousand. You know, anything that can do the all in one. We're not oh, talking they, about that. They, well, yeah, there's, there's, yeah, okay. neural, neural, yep, DSP. Yeah, um, we're not talking about that. We're talking about you want to, you know, you don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. You want to keep your kind of traditional pedals, but you want to do away with the amp. Why might you want that? I don't know. You don't want to carry it around anymore. The places that you play don't allow any stage volume anymore. You might play in church. Um, so you need a direct solution that's going to go straight to front of house. Yeah. How you monitor, well, that's up to you. It's either IEMs or it's wedges. We'll leave that to you. What we're doing is everything you hear today is going to be coming out of a full range flat response PA speaker which is a 1500 watt EV thing that we use for a PA speaker. Right. It's set in its completely normal mode. So no EQ shenanigans here or there. There is a Labrador barking for the World Barking Championships warm-up heats. It's impressive, actually, yeah. the commitment to the bark. It is. I think it could be in a metal contender. So yeah. if you hear a woof, that's what that is. Um, so yeah, we're going to just have a quick listen, uh, and you'll also notice something else on the board there. Yeah, that we will from, from yesteryear. Indeed, <laughs> indeed. Uh, okay, so let's start off with we've got two different gain stages. We've got a, a heavy gain stage, a light medium gain stage, and a delay. A couple of you know really common. If you're going to have a pedal board, a couple of gas stages and a delay, fairly... Yeah, you might, you, you might want to add a flashy reverb into that. We don't have one here today, but the the um, Volante has some reverb in it, so we'll turn that on as well. It does. So we'll be using that in combination with the solutions that we've got. Uh, so what shall we start with? Um, let's start with the, the only thing that's been on the show so far, the Iridium. Okay, the Iridium. Strym is Iridium. So all of these things actually can do stereo. We've got them in mono today. Yes. Because that's... Simplicity. Yeah, easy. Okay, so without any guitar cabinet simulator, this is the guitar plugged directly into the PA. Identifiable as Telecaster. Yes. Um, and I dare say, if you gave it some preamp love and some EQ, there'd be some great direct tones there in the in the vein of uh, all the people that have done great direct tones over the years. Okay. <laughs> Dan's not not especially happy. I'm trying to be more open. You are. Uh, God bless you. So what we need to do, for those of you new to this game, what you need to add into that is some sort of preamp, some sort of power amp simulation, some sort of speaker cabinet simulation, and the Strymon Iridium anyone, most of you will know this, but if you don't know, Strymon Iridium does all of that. It simulates a guitar amplifier and a speaker cabinet. Yes. Yes. Okay. That, that room is a standalone effect on its own. It's so good. 
We'll get to it. Keep going. <laughs> You were getting progressively less happy there. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So, you know, totally untreated, no EQ, no post effects done or anything like that. Um, obviously, we can we can improve that a little bit, I think. But for us, Dan, you'd be looking for a fairly cleanish, simple amplifier job so that yep. the pedals can do the other work. Yeah. We don't want it to sound like a crank damp in this instance. Right? No, I, I'd like to have a little bit of tiny bit of limiting yeah there but you know no, i don't want to i don't want it to be a cranked marshall yeah you know that's not what i'm looking for what we will come on to in a bit is what you can do to a direct sound to make it um sound a little less direct and a little bit more roomy and interestingly enough strymon have put a control called room uh on the iridium for that exact purpose and it's essentially a short room reverb isn't it yeah yeah, yeah. yep <laughs> Have a little play, get a sound that, that I would be happy with. I'm not going to lie, it is a bit of a struggle, actually. Yep. There's a bunch of frequencies there that are, no matter... 
something I would get to quite quickly normally uh, in a non-direct scenario. Sure. Yep. What's interesting though, as soon as the delay went on, bit of modulated delay. Yeah. It's like everything knitted together. Yeah. I think that's why one of the reasons this approach is so popular um, is so popular in a church crowd and in any environment in which there's plenty of reverb and delay and lush clean. Right. You know, I get that largeness, largeness of sound. Sure. Don't want to be too generalistic about it, but that seems to be a thing. Okay. In that world. Yeah. Okay. Um, obviously the well, not obviously the iridium's got three amp types and three cab types. There's mm -hmm. some other hidden functions. But yeah, you get the idea. You can just dial in a sound that gets you close to an amp sound, enables you to go direct, and that works. Yeah. And that's what you end up with. Let's just try the iconoclast a sec. So the iconoclast you is like very this. different. I've I've used this um, when I was funny enough when I was testing software. And just, you know, two o'clock in the morning at home with headphones on. And it was really it was it was fine. The sounds that I I was doing all the you know, really out there reverbs and stuff, and it was actually really good. It's very different, and it's just, well, it's just, I shouldn't say just, it's a speaker simulator. Yeah, so it's not its not trying to be a deluxe reverb or no. a, an AC30 or a Marshall, which is what most of the others are trying to do. Uh, it just has a really simple EQ section. Yeah. Um, you've got a noise gate on it and volume for your headphones. Uh, but if we have a listen to, again, this is the sound directly into the PA. I turn the, the reverb in the Volante on there just to give you a bit of something because it's very hard when it's... Yeah, yeah. But you see, it's you'd never mistake that for an amplifier, but it's not... It's 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 There's something about it that I, I like. Yeah, I think you. It's, in, it's so interesting. We'll turn the amp on at the end just to wake us back up into amp world. But actually, psychosomatically speaking, or indeed just with what your brain is telling you, it's... It's amazing how quickly you get used to a sound. It, yeah, it really is. That's that's really interesting. And it's only actually. the AB that makes it, yeah, that throws it into relief. Yeah. Um, yeah. But no, we'll, I've, we'll, I really we'll like you. that. I, I think you know, uh, for playing with headphones, I've always really struggled with you know anything with a headphone output. Yeah. Um, but that I actually really enjoy. Thought it was yep. quite good. Yeah, well it's it's primarily for that, but also they uh they do say, you know, you stick it on your end of your pedal board to give you a speaker simulation. Um what we've discovered is level wise that's it. There's no more. There's no more. Um so it's it doesn't have as much level capability as the uh as the others that we're gonna look at, but that's yeah. okay. You can set the level in your um speaker mm -hmm. or they can do it at the desk or you can do it from your overdrive pedals. Let's just hear it with some higher gain a sec down with the filaments. <laughs> The 
that that tells me the story yep. of overdrive pedals and direct sounds. There's a real high, uh, an interesting harmonic interplay not going on there. Yeah. And for sure, it might take you a minute to run through a bunch of ODs and you'll find some that work really well and some that work less well. Mm. Uh, sorry, I've just got to do it. H here, the Hot Rod Deluxe with, with these settings on this pedal, it's probably going to take your head off. prefer either one of those sounds i don't much like either of them as it goes um the that second sound had a lot in common with what we're going to hear at the very end it's right <laughs> right okay because it's good. just such a different bunch of frequencies that you've got to deal with and yeah. your um front of house engineer will shape that into something that works for front of house yes um what you hear in your ears i guess is up to you or the or the monitor engineer or indeed out of your wedge okay so there's the iconoclast uh, in its defense on the end of a really nice stereo delay and reverb in headphones, it's spectacularly good. Yeah. Just, I think, once you hit amplification, then it becomes susceptible to everything else you've got before it. Indeed. And it's, indeed. A, it's a more difficult environment, isn't yes, it? Yes, indeed. It, with the Iridium and, you know, the more complicated uh, units, you've got more options to dial back some of those yeah. harsher frequencies. You've, you know, you can turn up the amplifier section so it's limiting a bit. Yeah. Whereas you don't get that option with the Iconoclast. That fizz will come through and, you yeah. know. It, all it's doing, well, it is, it's, I mean, it has, obviously it has an amplifier in it, but it is simulating a speaker first exactly. and foremost. There you go. Yeah. So let's move on to the simplifier then. This is the thing that I think has changed my mind a little bit just recently about the scope of these things and what is interesting sounds like a you know a plant but it is all analog yeah um the others use digital uh modeling which is you know all good and clever and appropriate yes and you know that me me and dad or if you're a regular viewer of the show you know that dan and i aren't, aren't massive fans of digital modeling for the most part so it's handy that the simplifier i thought sounded pretty good let's see if you sit, think it sounds pretty good as well it is a stereo um device as well mm -hmm. which has uh independent controls for the um speaker cabinets that you use we're only using it in mono to keep things fair today with the other two again three amp types but it's got a couple of extra controls on it, which I think are super interesting. Okay. And easy to use. Okay. Because I think when you're in the heat of battle, as it were, i.e. a sound check or I don't know, whatever it is you're doing, you don't have all day. You just need a couple of things that you can, as global tone shapers you can just adjust on the fly work yeah, for you yeah, yeah. so, so have a play dan um what we've what we've got it set on currently i'll have to get closer so my eyes work is the ms brit uh simulation which we're going to guess is marshall british okay um two I'll, by twelve i think yeah 212 i'll flick through a lot of the options so you so you can hear them so here we are again straight into the
those two controls that I mucked about with last there, I didn't even touch the EQ. There's two controls. One simulates the moving of the microphone from the uh, edge of the speaker to the center of the dust cap. Interesting. And I think that's the most useful control on it because right. it enables you to just dial in that top end. Similarly, there's a presence control and a power amp simulation, which gives you a bit more harmonics simulating. It's very easy to start reading out the manual and go, this is what that does. Right. It doesn't really matter. What matters is turn the knob and see what, see if you like the sound of yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, well, as you can see from the settings we've got there, we seem to like the settings cranked a bit, mm. which is where the thing has some life. If you want to dial in some gain, you can. Keep going. That sounds nice. Well, yeah, whether you like it or not, there's more scope yeah. to, to change some of those global things. Um, sorry, the fans come on oh, in, the, the, in the PA speaker. Um, to get it closer to something that you like. And some of you watching will have preferred when we added the gain and made it bassy with the 4x12 yeah. cabinet simulation. Um, some of you would have preferred it thinner and spankier sounding a bit cleaner. So that's up to you. I think, I, I think I've... Identify what the issue is. Yep. So these are solutions when you need to turn down. Okay. Turning down is the problem. <laughs> yeah, right. Do you know what I mean? Because you it's need like, all that extra bottom end. Well, no, it's the, it's that extra connection. It's the it's the way the frequencies, the the way the sound pressure level actually works with the guitar. Yeah, I can tell you're not enjoying it at all. It's I, I'm finding it really hard. I'm, I, everything I'm playing is from memory. Yeah. Just just you know thinking. Well, this isn't going anywhere. Maybe if I stick my fingers here. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> somewhere else. Because why? There's there's no like feedback loop. No, it, it for just, you as the there's player. A, there's a disconnect. That's and I've just and I've, you know, it seems really obvious, right? But, but it's if just sort of clicked. If you were a better guitar player, Dan, you'd be able to just play and it wouldn't matter. Is no, that right? That's absolutely. Look. Absolutely. <laughs> that's that. I, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that's the argument that's often put forward. It's like you just be professional and put your fingers where they're supposed to go and play the. Play the right notes and it doesn't matter what it sounds like. So like that's we're not really in that camp. Yeah. Are we? Well, no, I'm not, and I'm I think anyway. no. Well it's well, it's just dawned on me why this is tricky. Yeah. You know. However, this is really important because this is a reality for a lot of people. Yeah, and also I think the experience is probably very different if you've got it in your ears with a whole band mix, yeah. loads and you of can turn it effects. Up probably sounds you know sounds and feels a lot better but we are dealing with the straight direct sound which is what's going to your front of house mm -hmm. let's hear it with some overdrive pedals see what happens when we uh you have a play when we love it with some overdrive pedals Thank you. 
there right so I'm struggling a little bit with really bringing out any inflection in terms of like harmonic feedback holding onto a note and it developing into something yeah yes not a lot of that there yes absolutely uh, a pretty sort of I would say a two dimensional experience but not unfriendly to play there was I don't know what you did but there was um, I, f I felt like the compression under the fingers and all of that felt pretty nice Certainly workable. Yeah. Um, not as much reaction off the guitar, turning the volume down. Mm -hmm. That sort of stayed much more linear than I would I would normally expect. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, not in any way unhappy with that tone, actually, from a straight tonal standpoint, bearing in sure. mind what we said before about, you know, you, you hearing something without a being it against something else. Yeah. Do me a favor, put the Hot Rod Deluxe on. And let's have all those pedals again. Okay.
Sorry, I had to. Dan and I were trying to work out how to play Sharp Dressed Man properly earlier. Yeah, you can do it. I, 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 well, I, don't, I don't have the skills. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, so clearly more familiar to us and happier playing experience for me, for sure, yeah. harmonically. Yeah. Now, that's not to say you couldn't dial in your full range flat response as the, that pedal dog is barking its head off now. Probably in response to the endlessly barking Labrador. Stereo. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's not to say you couldn't shape it thereafter and entrust that to front of house. What I find interesting is that harmonic response. I'm used to this because I've been doing it for 35 years. Yeah. Yeah, that long. <laughs> I might have to amend my statement before because to me, the Hot Rod Deluxe doesn't seem that much louder than what we're getting out of the the PA speaker. Yeah, the... the um, the DB meter might have been saying that it's louder. It is a good 18 inches closer to it, so that would make a difference. Yeah. It's, it's not much. It's, it's not. Just do that test then. Do that test. Kind of similar, yeah, and much clo much quieter than we normally play. Yeah, but even as quiet as the Hot Rod Deluxe is, there's a I don't have that disconnect. So all I'm saying is, for me, if what if I needed to be quiet on stage, that's not a solution for me. Yeah, it is a solution if I need to be absolutely silent. silent. Yeah, right. But if I'm allowed any, if I'm allowed a wedge, yeah. a monitor, then I'm having a and I'm, I'm having an amp on stage. A little amp, a, t a ten watt something. Absolutely. Or a five watt something. All right. So that's a quick flick through the the capabilities of those. Let, let's underline it and say that you know if you do want to stop carting your amp about, you can literally add something like the Iridium, the Iconoclast, or the Simplifier to your pedal board and just you know put your amp in storage, send a direct feed to the front of house or your own PA system and be done with it. Um, we should also probably mention the Walrus ACS, I think it's called. Yeah. Um, Lots of love for that at the moment. Uh, Thomas Blue, Blue Guitar does a speaker simulator. So there are various boxes out there, and there have been for many, many, many years. There's nothing new about this other than the tech they're putting in them now and the functionality on the units themselves is, mm -hmm. is, is pretty unusual. Um, let's say you don't want to do that. We've got... Some people say, well, why don't you just... Put an EQ pedal at the end of your pedal board to simulate a speaker. We've gone one step further. We, we're going to try that with the EQ pedal to try and simulate that sound of a, of a speaker. Mm -hmm. We've also added a compressor, a very specific compressor, a kind of um, LA-2A style compressor, simple um, compression and output knobs on it to give a little bit of amp feel. So the question is, if you don't want to get into modeling of speakers, amps and all that, what could you just add something simple on the end of your pedal board and yeah. go direct and, and, and get there? So, so what's really interesting is this will be a purely clean sound. Yeah. Right? But the, there'll be a bit of grit. Well, we'll add some overdrive with pedals. But, but, yeah, but the bass tone, like with the simplifier, we've got a little bit of, yeah. you know, a bit of edge, a bit of grunt there. Doing it this way, we're not going to have that, we'll have, but we will have limiting. Yeah, yeah. So I'm really interested to see how EQ into compressor yeah. into straight into the PA works with OD going in the front of it. Okay, so you play. I'll turn the compressor off for a sec. The first thing I'm going to do is try and get some life into the equalization straight from the guitar into the um, into the full range flat response. So yeah. you switch between these two. That's, yeah. the, that's the direct out. Okay.
Just the um the eight K. Can you just pull that down a hair? So okay. let's compare that with our simplifier then. Sounds like a zingy acoustic guitar. Still, to, still sorry. sounds very much like a direct yeah, sound. Yeah, it really does. Let's uh, add some overdrive. Yeah. I don't think the compressor's helping at all. Right. Really. Yeah, okay. So, that, I mean, you know, quick a quick uh, excursion into... That's really interesting, because I thought, oh, we're going to nail this. I think you could and keep going. You, you absolutely keep going, but... And you could add an overdrive into that. Of course. I think what's actually going on there in these pedals that are doing this for real, though, is so much more complicated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's you not know, just EQ, and that's no, really the point. It really isn't. And, and you hear that, you know, in, in the early attempts at direct outs from guitar amps, mm. where it was essentially a bit of EQ sure. on an, an XLR or, a, you know, a jack to go direct to, to desk. That's what you were hearing. You mm. were hearing EQ shaping, not a fairly complex interaction of, of dynamics. Sure. All right. Um, let us then remind ourselves if we were to rewind... I'm going to double check this. The year? <laughs> yeah. I've got 1986 in my head, but I've got a feeling it's even earlier than that. <laughs> so why are you playing that, Dan? Well, this is the Rockman X100 by Tom Schultz. <laughs> Tom Schultz, uh, famously of the band Boston, and he was an amazing guitar player, songwriter, and also inventor of many cool things. But I think this is the this was the big one for me that changed a lot of stuff. 1982. 1982? No way. <laughs> so if you were back then, um, it was it was conceived as a headphone amp, right? Yeah. Primarily, but it ended up being used on quite a lot of recordings. It's very famous down the years. We don't want to tell its story. We just want you to hear it in all its glory. Indeed. Ready, Dan? Let's give it a go. What is it in number six? <laughs> Basically, all of um, what was that big Def Leppard album? Hysteria. Hysteria. That's all Hysteria I guitar think, sounds I right think, there. Uh, Phil Collin and Vivian Campbell and Mutt Langer might be really annoyed by that comment, Daniel. 
I think, was it Vivian Campbell at that point? Might have been, don't know. It was definitely Phil Collin anyway. Um, not Phil Collin. So, first of all, thank you to Simon Green uh, for lending us that Rockman. Simon um, is a very kind fellow who uh, lent me the 61 strap for all that time. And Simon sent us that and said, you've got to hear this. I think it's a really good reminder of how far we've come. Yeah, because we get a lot of comments going, hey, man, the Rockman's really great. And don't get me wrong, you could take that into the studio with a great engineer and you could EQ it up and you get some great sounds out of it. And which people have been doing for years and, and years and years. As have has been proven yep. on hit records is yep. what he just said. So please yep. don't take this as a, a giant poo-pooing. But in this context, next to these things, I mean, it's just, it's a trillion, zillion, squillion miles off, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, totally. So we, we've come a long way. Maybe. Um, and I, I, I don't know about you. So Dan and I are, you know, we're, we're biased, if the, if that's the right word, um, very heavily towards tube amps. Yes, hey? yes. Just because we've been playing them for so long. But I think with something like the Simplifier and the Iridium for that matter, but mm. especially the Simplifier for me, um, used in the context of a direct rig where you've got plenty of wet effects. Yes. And if you were using it in stereo, I think you could have a very nice time indeed in your ears with a great monitor mix Yeah, on a silent stage. But I would say I still think it is a palpably different thing mm. to that. It's a different... Which not everyone It's a loves. different sport. Yeah, it is a different sport. That's playing baseball and that one's <laughs> UFC, you know. <laughs> Some dude in the UFC, some dude in the baseball pitch has been choked out. He's got no idea why. Touchdown. Just no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, let it also be said that, um, I, you know, with more post-processing, with more EQ, with more time spent, with more messing about with parameters, I dare say you could, uh, b better, worse, different, whatever adjectives you want to use, a bunch of guitar sounds than, than we've got today. Yeah. And cue all the comments from people that, that are using this in using these in various situations, um, getting great results that they're really happy with, and that is fantastic. Yeah. You know, the, the the reality is, if these help you get out and gig in yeah. any scenario, then it's a good thing. It is a good thing. You know, it, because there are situations that it's inappropriate to have amps on stage. Yeah. Totally get that. Um, you know, so there are solutions. There are solutions. I think, Dan, it would only be right to, um, let's put the Hot Rod Deluxe where we normally have it. Okay. Which would be about here. Well, there you go. Hope you enjoyed that. 
Yeah. Interesting stuff. It is really interesting stuff. And yep. I think it depends entirely on your environment you're playing, uh, history, what you're used to, what you're not used to. I think it's come such a long way. Yeah, it really has. A, 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 such a long way. I think it's still got a long way to go. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But if this is a solution that helps you get out and play, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And lest we forget that amps really are being banned in a lot of places. Yeah. So, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so the more solutions, the better. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, again, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Uh, we, we feel the love. We do. We do. Um, buy yourself a, a holiday shirt. And if yes. You, if you don't like it, buy it for someone you don't like. <laughs> Very, yes, <laughs> thatpedalshowstore.com. Uh, yes, all the loads of merch there, pedals and shirts and hats and all the stuff. Um, also, a massive thank you to our patrons on Patreon. Thank you so much for your support. We thank really you. appreciate it. Uh, also, our preferred retailers in the UK and Europe. Anderson's Music of Guildford in Surrey, who in fact first uh, were banging on about the simplifier. Oh, were they? Before I had a chance to listen to it with my own ears. Very yeah. good. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and our mates in Australia. Uh, would be Pedal Empire of Brisbane, Queensland. Very good. And there are links in the description below. There are. If you click on them... Oh, Hungry Dan? <laughs> that was the speaker. <laughs> um, if you click on them and buy stuff, uh, Dan and I get a kickback from that and it helps us fund the show. Indeed. Uh, there we go. Please join us for VCQ on Monday. We'd be really interested to hear your experience. Where well, you can if kick us down the road about all these opinions. All this stuff. All this stuff. <laughs> yeah, but join us then and have a fantastic week. We'll see you soon. Okay, see ya. Cheers, bye.